Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name's Techman. I'm here to help you get into the game. We're getting into Rift again, and this time we're gonna cover classes. Oh boy, classes, there's a lot to cover here. So we're gonna go over all as much as I can without going too deep. I'm actually gonna do a class by class of videos in the next couple of weeks covering a lot of the presets and some of the more interesting souls. But for now we're gonna cover the basics. I've already covered the mages or spellcasters. Oh, before I forget, I generally do this. I will not be covering the Storm Legion souls because you don't actually start with those, so those will actually have a separate video where it's just me talking about the Storm Legion souls and how they function. Anyway. Mage. Mage is cloth armor, a lot of casting. A primary focus of the mage is damage dealing. A lot of their souls are dedicated to it in some form or another, be it a pyromancer and just lighting things on fire because why not fire is fun <laughs> to the support of the archon or the give me a second i need i got the pronunciation right here oh dominator for some reason i had that down as a different name the dominator which is another support soul for them uh, mages offer variety big thing to keep in mind a lot of it is cast times and a lot of it's making sure you have everything lined up Supporting can be a lot of fun with the mage. You can bring debuffs, buffs, crowd control, depending on what spec you go with. You can bring um, not one, but two different pet classes. You have the Elementalist, which focuses on like golems and stuff, where you also have the Necromancer, which is more along the lines of raising Uncle Johnny and help, having him help you fight. They also have a really fun, it's technically a healing soul, but in my mind, it's a really nice support soul as well, and that's the Chloromancer. Chloromancer, I think I said. Yeah. Mm. Oh, goody goody, here comes an event. Uh, the Chloromancer is a healing tree, and yes, it's a plant mage. Um, they offer a lot. And this is actually a soul I will have a lot of fun with later on. It's one of my favorite souls to play with, so we'll have fun covering that. Things to keep in mind as a mage. If you don't like cast times, keep looking. You're not going to find a lot of fun here. If you like some limited versatility, you're, you're going to be awesome. Note, mages can't tank. But they have a lot of fun just because they can do a lot of different things. Be it fire, be it death, be it um, life. All sorts of fun things. Next up on the list is the rogue. Rogues wear leather armor. I think, I, I think I've said that already in a different video, but never heard so fresh. Rogues don't have a healing soul, but they do have a lot of fun. Rogues bring a lot to the table in different wild, crazy events. You have the pet class, the ranger, as uh, shown here. I realize you guys can't see my cursor in the videos. I apologize. I should get a, a marker on it so you guys can see me. But... Rogues are, again, mostly a damage-based class, but their damages come in so many formats. Two different stealth classes, the Nightblade, which focuses on elemental damage and healing a wide area, the Assassin, which focuses on poisons, you have the Blade Dancer, which is sort of a dodge and parry class based around almost the rhythm of combat. Two different range classes, the Ranger, which focuses on both player and pet. A lot of abilities that buff the pet come in the tree and a lot of them sync well with you. For example, the Bleeding Move, Splinter Shot, will allow me to use Blood Rage, which can increase damage consistently for my pet, which is really handy to have. Marksman focuses on long-range single-shot abilities. It's going to line up and he's dead. A lot of different tricks there. You have as again, the Assassin, which is a stealth um, poison team. You also have the Rift Blade. Rift Stalker, excuse me. It's called a Rift Blade. I think it's <laughs> Riftstalker, one of my favorite classes. A, this is a uh, dodge, absorb, parry tank. He's also really, really mobile. Uh, with at, I've got at least two or three abilities that let me. Um, let's see. I can. Uh, I've got three different abilities that let me just jump around like I'm a bad. I mean, who doesn't love the idea to be able to jump 15 feet forward as a tank? 
And this lets me use my main ability, Rift Guard, which lets me absorb additional damage. It's a lot of fun just because you're a rogue who's tanking. And it's not the guy who accidentally pulled aggro. It's a lot of fun, and it's just an interesting overall fun to play class. Uh, if you like the idea of being able to take long shots one time, then be the guy in the front uttering, well, nothing safe to repeat on YouTube anyway, at least with kids around. What do I have here? Hmm, because I forgot to do, turn something in. Oops. Do you see anything you like? Right. Sorry, I forgot I had that up. Moving on, down the tree. We're moving next to the clerics. Uh, hopefully you've oiled your chainmail, because, well, this stuff's a little heavy. And let's face it, no one likes that clanging. What about the warriors? Who are the guys in the beginning of Robin Hood Man? That's plate mail, never mind. Uh, chain mail, a lot of fun. As you may notice, I actually have a different weapon on this character, and I also... I uh, switched my other spec. I decided I'd follow my own advice for once. Voila! And now, I am a, I am a druid. Come forth, my helper. <laughs> it's the reason you don't do this in the middle of combat if you can help it. Da da! He tanks, I hit things. It's a beautiful meditation. Clerics have a lot of healing souls, to be honest. Four of them told, three of them in the base game. You have the Purifier, who focuses on as a fire healer. Single target, abs absorbing damage, as well as good single target heals. Big weakness, it doesn't hit a lot of targets at once. You have the Warden, who uses war based magic to heal over time. This gives them a nice balance. You can heal, either heal a single target or multiple targets. But not super fast. Healing over time takes, as the name suggests, time. And finally, you have the Sentinel. Instant heals, single target, works great. I heard they can actually, um, some reading and investigation shows they actually go to a dual target healing, which to me is just fascinating. The idea of being able to heal two targets. I believe it's your target and yourself, but still, heals the heals. End of the file, which I, you've kind of seen me play in, uh, before on the channel. Clerics bring a lot in just fun tricks. Uh, beyond the standard, I mean, you've got healing, you have two different melee souls. You have the Shaman and the Druid. Druid uses a pet, Shaman's not... Uh, kind of like how the Rogue has two ranged souls. Even though they do two different things, one has a pet, one doesn't, they're still a lot of fun. A Shaman focuses more on elements, lightning and ice in particular. Looks like they also get some really nice shields, which can be really useful if you have... Let me see, where is it? Trying to see if there's an early shield. I'm not seeing an early shield. Otherwise, that'd be something you could definitely throw in as a healer and just have that extra option. Always gotta keep that in mind when you're pairing souls together. What helps what? For example, a Rift Stalker and a Blade Dancer would gain ex would really kind of sync well. The Blade Dancer's dodge and parry would work well with the Rift Nat with the Rift Stalker's natural dodging ability. But remember, that's a damage soul, so you may not get as much out of it. We'll go over those combinations in a different video. Check my time real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh! Eight minutes better wrap this up because I got one last soul to cut. One last group to cover. Alright. Warriors, come out and play! Rounding out the field and the ones often getting hit. You can tell by the dings in the armor. Is the warriors? Warriors bring a lot to the table in a different sort of manner. They have a lot of options for weapons. Right now, you have my elf, who is a tank. Although I'm not in my tank spec right now. Give me a second. This looks silly. I'm actually currently in a paragon spec, which means I should have a weapon in each hand. This also pairs well with the rift blade, which uses elemental damage. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. This is a sort of support. This is the warlord. This is actually a support role. This is sort of a support tank. He's the off tank. He's helping in other ways. Other than that, you have the paladin. This is. He's here as well. Paladins are sort of a shielding class. They can shield themselves, they can shield others, they can heal themselves, they can heal others. You have the void knight. Mage killer. Say it with me. 
mage killer. It's fun. You have okay, playing up the dad now. Okay, rounding out the warriors. You also have the Reaver, which is an AoE um, damage over time tank. You've got the Beastmaster. <laughs> yeah, Player Master, I said last video, it's it's Beastmaster. How I forgot that, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, obviously, that's a pet you can summon. You've got a two-handed AoE and with the champion. There's options. Lots of options. And the real trick of the game is finding what works for you. I love playing with a pet when I level, most of the time, because it gives me a lot of flexibility and lets me take on things a little tougher than I might normally, because I've got two people together. It works. Hi. So much covered, so little time. Next couple of weeks, I'll be going over each class individually, looking at some of the presets, how they play, and what you're gonna need to keep in mind. Also, I'm not sure I covered this in the last video, but I found something very interesting. Some people will point out in the game, you can spend real world money, human currency, to buy sets of armor. And the point that this is a pay to win situation. My counter argument. You don't need to spend just real world money. Let me see if I can pull this up. This is what I... What? Oh. Oh, it does come with a weapon. Interesting, I didn't know they came with a weapon. So this is sort of the damage set I'd use. And if I want to tank, I'd get... What the heck is that? I guess it's a sword. But you can actually look at all different ranges. Um, let me take these out and... And it appears it's level 20 is the lowest level you can start grand gear. Let's see what the top end looks like. Ooh, I dig that shield. I wonder what the other one looks like. And you can see this is just gear that can be really useful. If you have two rolls like we pl like I'm playing with here as a warrior, I might need to spend a little more money. Or let's say I <clears throat> pick up tanking all of a sudden. I could grind off gear as my main spec, or I could maybe grab something. If you have the cash, it's one thing, and since there is an option to buy it, note, as I said, you only have a limit on how much you can buy, how much platinum you can have as a free-to-play account. So that's something to keep in mind. But there's so much there, and it's so interesting. So hopefully I've been helping you guys out. Um, next couple weeks, we're going to go down the chain, mage, rogue, uh, cleric, and warrior, and we're going to cover the classes, cover some of the presets, and just some more fan fa interesting facts. Until then, I hope to see you in the rifts. This is Tech Pants, signing off.